guys know the story. A young freshman named Mike Jordan hits the most iconic shot in the history of college basketball up to that point. So at number 10, I've got Texas Western from 1966. They went 28-1. and Their only loss was the final game of the regular season to the University of Seattle. It was a classic trap game. They lost by two points. But we all remember this because in the national championship game against Kentucky, Texas Western started their all-black starting lineup against the all-white Kentucky squad, and Texas Western won. And well, like they say, the rest is history. Number 10, Texas Western, 1966. The 1984 Georgetown Hoyas went 34-3. and There are three losses. On the road by two points at DePaul. On the road by two points in double overtime at Villanova. And on the road by four points at St. John's. This team was absolutely terrific. The only game in the NCAA tournament they almost lost was their first round matchup. Where SMU, because this was pre-shot clock era, they tried to run out the clock on them. And they only won 37-36. to A game, a college basketball game, ending in a final score of 37 to 36 is insane. In the national championship game, Georgetown beat the University of Houston and Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and Patrick Ewing, the star center of Georgetown. He went to three national championship games in his four years at Georgetown. In his freshman year, he lost to Michael Jordan in North Carolina on that iconic shot. And his senior year, he lost to Villanova in the greatest perfect game ever played 52 to 50. But the 1984 squad, they make number nine on my list. This University of San Francisco squad absolutely dominated. When they won the national title, it was their second in as many years, and it marked their 55th straight win. 29-0 that season. Bill Russell was a senior. He graduated with back-to-back national titles, a 55-game winning streak. And then how does he follow it up? He goes to the NBA, leads the Boston Celtics to 11 championships in 13 years. This guy is by far the greatest winner in the history of sports, and frankly, it's not even that close. But... People forget, on those Boston Celtics squads, as well as the San Francisco squad, Bill Russell was joined by teammate Casey Jones. Casey Jones was no slouch himself. He won eight championships with the Boston Celtics as a player, then two more as an assistant coach, and then two more as the head coach of the Boston Celtics, where he led Larry Bird and Kevin McHale and those dudes in the early 80s. So, 1956 San Francisco squad, they won every game but two by double digits. They come in at number eight on my list. This UNLV squad from 1990 was absolutely stacked. They went 35-0. They won three NCAA tournament games by more than 30 points, including the national title game against Duke. They averaged over 95 points a game for the tournament. Both of those are still records. Oh, and by the way, they won 45 straight games over the course of two seasons, and they had three players drafted in the NBA lottery top 12. Greg Anthony, Stacey Ogman, and Larry Johnson, a.k.a. Grandmama. UNLV running Rebels coming in at number seven on my list. 2012 Kentucky squad absolutely dominated. They set the record for most wins in a season by a college team with 38. Overall, they went 38-2. and two. They lost two games, once on the road to Indiana by one point and once in the conference tournament to Vanderbilt when they already had the number one overall seed locked up. In the NCAA tournament, they won every single game by at least eight points. They had eight players on this team that played in the NBA at some point. They had the number one overall pick and the number two overall pick in the next year's draft who were both freshmen on this squad Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist and you know what Anthony Davis was the third freshman ever in the history of college basketball to win national player of the year the other two Kevin Durant Zion Williamson not bad company if you ask me and I almost put the 1996 Kentucky squad here they went 34 and 2 and had nine players play in the NBA but this Kentucky squad was absolutely dominating from the beginning to the end that's why they come at number six on my list you're going to take down Goliath. It's going to take a massive effort. But luckily, the 1974 NC State Wolfpack were up to the challenge because earlier in the year, they lost to Bill Walton and the UCLA Bruins to extend UCLA's win streak to 79 wins. And they just didn't lose. They lost by 20 points to them. Now, that UCLA streak would come to an end a few games later against Notre Dame, but NC State would run through the rest of the season. They went 34-1 and overall. And then they met in the Final Four against UCLA once again. And what we had was an instant classic. David Thompson and Bill Walton going at it. You know what? David Thompson's squad came out on top by three points in double overtime. Then they won the national title against Marquette, and the rest is history. 1974 NC State Wolfpack, they make number five on my list. You guys know the story. A young freshman named Mike Jordan hits the most iconic shot in the history of college basketball up to that point. And Dean Smith gets his first ever national title with the University of North Carolina, a 1982 squad that went 32-2. and But you know what? 
people forget about this 1982 North Carolina squad is they beat Patrick Ewing and Georgetown in the national title game. But in the final four, they played the University of Houston and Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler, and they won by five points. And you know what? I actually thought about putting the 2009 North Carolina squad on this list instead of the 1982 squad led by Tyler Hansborough because they had five players drafted in the first round. They went 34-4, and four, but... How could I resist talking about Michael Jordan and this iconic shot? I know. I couldn't. So that's why they come in at number four on my list. Can I interest you in the first repeat national champion since the 1973 UCLA Bruins led by Bill Walton? Because that's exactly what the Duke Blue Devils did in 1992 when they won the national title. But this is the famous year in the Elite Eight against the University of Kentucky where Christian Leitner hits the shot and had the perfect game where he had 31 points, 10 for 10 from the field, and 10 for 10 for the free throw line. And then in the national title game, they played the Fab Five who were all freshmen in the University of Michigan. And people forget, earlier in that year, Duke went on the road to Ann Arbor and played the University of Michigan and won by three points in overtime. But these Michigan freshmen, they got cocky. They thought they could hang with the big boys at Duke because they thought they were going to win the game because they lost by three and they'd only gotten better and gained more experience. Well, they were wrong because they got absolutely shellacked in the national title game. The thing about it was I almost put the 2001 Duke team here because that's my favorite squad ever because Jason Williams, a.k.a. Jay Williams, is my favorite college player ever. But this 92 squad, it was undeniable. Number three. And this one's kind of boring. I'm not going to lie to you guys. We all know the Indiana Hoosiers of 1976 are the last college basketball team to go undefeated. But there's really not a whole lot to talk about because they absolutely dominated everybody they played against. And it wasn't like they were playing against a bunch of shitty teams because they played the number 17 team in the country, the number 5 team in the country, the number 2 team in the country, the number 12 team in the country, all in the NCAA tournament. And they beat them all by at least 10 points, including in the national title game against the number seven team in the country, the University of Michigan, who they beat by 20 points. So, like, I really don't know what to say. They had a bunch of NBA players. They went 32-0. They were awesome. Last undefeated team. Bobby Knight's still a dick. Indiana's awesome. Number two on my list. I mean, I don't know if there's a more apropos Sports Illustrated cover in the history of Sports Illustrated because... UCLA slaughtered everyone in 1972. They went 30-0, and they won their games by an average of 30 points a game. Think about that. Every game they played, their opponent lost by at least 30 points on average. I almost put the 1973 Bill Walton-led UCLA Bruins on this list. But then I thought about it. They didn't win all their games by almost 30 points. I almost put the 1967 and the 1968 UCLA Bruins led by Lou Alcindor on this list. But then once again... They didn't win all their games by almost 30 points. The only team that did, still a record, is the 1972 UCLA Bruins. The craziest thing is, Bill Walton was only a sophomore. He was the National Player of the Year. He averaged 21-15 and 15 as a sophomore. And when they won the national title game against Florida State, that was their 45th consecutive victory. They went on to win 88 games in a row. Think about that.